Elderly Americans are at risk of losing their retirement savings to cognitive decline. Many caregivers are reporting they saw finances mismanaged by an elderly relative. Uh, it's horrible to think about, isn't it? Financial instructor Michael Mazarin from the Retirement Education Foundation joins us now with more on the problem, but also on the fix as well. So, Michael, this is horrible to think about as our loved ones are getting older and either they're doing harm to themselves, their financial mm -hmm. harm to themselves, or maybe somebody else's. It's really tricky because, I mean, number one, setting aside the fact that if someone has cognitive decline and requires extra care, that can be really expensive. That's a, that's a whole other problem on its own that we can tackle at a different time. But just, you know, recognizing the signs and then what do we do about it? It's really tricky because if anyone's ever taken keys from a parent, you know, that, that can be a fight on its own, let alone take away their finances. Mm -hmm. It's really challenging. It's important if we can have these conversations early and often with parents so that no one's caught off guard, there's a plan in place, and that the parents feel like, you know what, we're all on the same team here. And so if the kids or whoever it is decide, you know what, I think mom, dad, whoever is starting to slow down a little bit, maybe make some mistakes, we should step in to help them. How much is cognitive decline related to financial mismanagement? So in terms of cognitive decline, as we age, one of the first skills that people begin to lose is mathematics skills. And so when we're doing our bills, when we're balancing our checkbooks, when we're looking at our investment accounts, all the numbers start to get blurry and they start, you know, I thought I paid that bill, I thought I withdrew those funds, I thought I took that RMD and all this, I thought I paid those taxes last year and things start to snowball. So Michael, what is, and by the way, on the screen there, we have some signs that uh, things are maybe going off track a little bit, but what do you do, um, because this gets complicated when you start trying to get involved with people's money, even if it's uh, your older parents, uh, people don't like that. For sure. So the best thing that people can do is be prepared ahead of time. Make sure mom and dad or whoever it is has an estate plan with financial powers of attorney. The financial powers of attorney documents will allow that person to step in and help to make sure everything's on the up and up with mom and dad. And if they don't have those documents set up, then now we've got to go to a doctor and have that doctor do tests on mom and dad and you know declare them mentally oh, unfit. Geez. And that's not fun for anybody. Mm -mm. Cognitive decline, or I know. Coming up in the next uh, hour, we're going to be talking about scams and how you can protect your elderly parents from, from that. But just having a conversation with them, just in case something happens to them, how important is that communication piece? Uh, we were talking earlier, you we were talking about how uh, people five, six years later are still trying to figure stuff out. Yeah, I mean, planning, planning, planning. So we've, we've uh, at the classes that we teach, we've had people tell us, oh my gosh, you know, my parents passed and it's been three years, I'm still dealing with unwinding accounts and beneficiaries and splitting oh. things and emails, phone calls, probate, attorneys, court costs, it can be a nightmare. And so, again, a lot of the parents, some parents might not want to talk about it, but just explaining to them, listen, the more organized your plan is, the more we can help take care of you, the less burden it is once, once you're gone, we can think, uh, we can spend time thinking about you and not spend time unwinding accounts. Is it always... Is it the children? Is it all the children? Or how do you work that out with the family dynamic? I mean, every family's different. So yeah. for some families, all the kids get along great. That's awesome. All the kids are responsible. For some, for some cases, that's not, not that's not the, the case. Mm. And that's a case-by-case -case example. But having a plan in place, so we're not scrambling on the back end, goes a long way. So funny you say yeah. that because you just instead of mourning the the loss or whatever, you're, you're sitting there so mad. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't. Right. <laughs> Looking Why for passwords and account I mean, numbers. And honestly, there was again, a story. ABC someone, one, two, three, is it your passwords? <laughs> someone told us a story at the classes that they said when their parents passed, they they found a box of paperwork. It was uh, over 60 accounts oh. at over 40 different companies. Oh my gosh. So it took them years, years to unwind these things. Mm. Unbelievable. Uh, coming up in the next hour, we are going to talk about scams. How easy it is for our elderly parents or elderly loved ones to be scammed mm. and what to look out for. Sounds great. You got it. All right. We'll be right back.